Morning guys, just in uh, picking up a few yabbies and continuing in the theme of the uh, one of the last videos I made. Just want to give you a bit of a rundown of these melon holes that I fish. Uh, there'll be a bit of a video later of um, me picking up a nice flathead here with, with Maggie. Um, on some uh, six or eight pound mono. While I was just fishing these ridges, melon holes, whatever you want to call them. For whiting when i'm fishing these i like to fish a, a run in tide like it is here at the moment if you can kind of see there where the boat is you can see the lines pushing out from the sand this is a sort of area where you, if you can find yabbies and find something like that you set up a bit of a drift about where the boat is there and just drift along if they're not in this melon hole you just move to the next one and probably they'll be in that one or you go to the next one or you go to the next one you just cover the ground uh, if I, like I alluded to uh, in one of the last videos, if you can pick up a bit of dirty water, that's fantastic. These good banks that I find, and the yabbies move around from bank to bank, but I do like the yabby banks that are a bit dirtier. They've got a little bit of mud in them, and you do tend to get that stirred up dirty water a lot more than out on the clean white, white sand. I just find that the whiting push up into here. Not only whiting, you get good flathead. And if you like chasing brim, there's millions of those push up into, into this same sort of area as well. So you can just see those melon holes. Where you see the lines are the ridges. So you just want to cast just on the uh, downstream side or the, the side where the water's flowing into. And the water will be stirred up in there and the, abbey, the, the whiting will use these to push. It's a bit deeper water and they only need a foot to push in and get up on top of the uh, yabby banks as soon as they can. Getting towards low tide, they will actually use those as cover. If they're pretty clever, and if you if they they know that the banks are not going to be completely exposed, they'll go back to where there's only a foot of water, and you'll actually see them shimmy down, and they'll sit buried pretty much just with their head or eyes out of the water like a flathead, and um, wait for the tide to just start pushing up, and that way they get the first opportunity at getting up on the bank. So I'm going to get a few yabbies. I'll try and get a few whiting for you as well, but. The other thing I do want to say is that 99% um, of videos out there and mine are probably the same. It pushes the idea that you can't lure fish, you've got to have braid, you've got to have, you know, big bunches of equipment. Uh, I'm going to try doing a bit of a thing where I use mono a bit more. Um, Every day mums and dads can get the kids out. There's nothing to stop you with, you know, the cheapest of outfits, throwing on a, a small grub on a small jig head and casting it out and you'll still get your flathead, your whiting, your brim. And uh, in these last, the last video and, and the one with Meg, the trick, if you get a bigger fish with the light mono, you've just got to back your drag off. More fish are lost trying to crank your drag up and get them in. You just back it off, let them run and eventually you'll tire them out. You don't need to horse the fish in. That's when you'll lose them, especially if, if you're using a light mono. Uh, it'll just, particularly with flathead, um, they'll just soar straight through it. Um, you, you've just got to have that softer rod, soft hands, and when they run, just let them go. I mean, out on the sand flats, they could run 500 metres and still not cut you off. Just let them run and tire themselves out. And if you're, you're on the bank fishing, just slowly slide them up onto the bank. If they, they'll thrash and you keep your line, keep your rod tip down so that their head doesn't come out of the water with the flathead, and you, you just skid them up onto the bank. You don't need to go ridiculous, just get that momentum coming, slow walk backwards, and most times you'll get them. Just back your drag off is one of the best tips I can give you if you want to fish with mono and you happen to get onto a, a few you know better fish like these flathead. So that's just a couple more tips. Um, like I said, you can sort of see the ridges here where the boat's sitting now really starting to become pronounced. The whiting will be pushing in along here, so are the sand flies. So, I'll go get some yabbies and um, hopefully you'll enjoy the clip a bit later where I'm fishing this exact same spot and um, you'll see where I'm casting right up pretty much to where I'm standing now into next to no water and pick up a nice flathead and I'm gonna try and replicate that today. So just another tip, um, you know, if mono is your thing, there's nothing to stop you throwing a lure on and trying to catch a fish with that. Uh, during winter, I fish with yabbies a lot and it produces a lot of fish but just because you you know you haven't got braid and you haven't got a million dollar setup does not mean that you can't get out there with the kids and um, get them onto some fun fish just throwing a few lures so all right we'll get amongst it eh cheers each to their own but um 
I normally only just do the three pumps in, in each abbey hole. If my pump's working good, you've got the full depth. You've already had a good suction out of the holes that are there. I see people having 10 or 12 digs in the one hole. Generally, especially on this incoming tide, you get up on the water's edge. White yabbies are in the hole. If you get three good pumps with a bit of suction, you'll get most yabbies that are in there. Move on to the next one. Around May and again in September, hopefully you can uh, pick that up. The yabbies will end up having heaps and heaps of eggs. Nearly, probably every second one has got eggs like that. And um, hopefully you can see that. Um, generally when the fish are in row, or the yabbies are in row like this, the whiting will be full on. So it's worth hanging around and um, having a bit of a fish where you get the yabbies. I think they actually, this is where they pop out of the ground and move banks um, at night on the big incoming tides. Sometimes you'll see these yabbies and they're just swimming, swarming across the water. And I think they, they transplant these young to another yabby bank and, and keep pro proliferating. So if you, um, like I said, if you spot these, these yabbies with row, then um, well worth uh, persisting a bit on those banks not every bank will have them for whatever reason but um this one certainly is and if you happen to see them generally there'll be a few fish around so it's always a pretty good sign all right let's get up going you can clearly see these lines and ridges that i'm fishing here now probably just a little bit early for the bigger fish to have moved up here but there's plenty of fish up on here like i said just fish these darker lines where it's a little bit deeper and uh, you'll go pretty well, I think. I'll, um, I'll probably have a flick, al ah! flick along here later with, um, with a plastic just to see if I can't get a, a flatty again. So Sometimes you'll find when you, you come up to like where the, a lot of roots and mangroves and stuff are, it's a little bit deeper, you'll find plagues at broom. It seems to be the, the sort of place they like to hang out, but the whiting will still will be there. It's not in any size by the looks. Heavier, it's a bit different light. Yeah. There you go, there's a flatty. He um, wouldn't be too far off legal, but new TT pliers too. They go on gangbusters. Good little pair of um, good little piece of kit if you're looking for a, a new set of pliers. Check them out. Do them in a, I think they're the split ring ones, they do them in a six, seven, and a set of straights, I think in a seven, something like that. As you can see, like you can, you could actually pick up a, you know, easily a bag of flathead, just drifting along here with your yabbies and all I'm doing is just that slow sort of wind up, you'll see it. And when you encounter a fish, you'll see of whiting normally they'll just go bang I reckon they they try and hit the yabby and stun it or kill it and then they'll come back like that I just drop my rod tip and miss them like that so that was um, a good little piece on how not to hook a fish I do find these bigger yabbies a bit harder I prefer sort of a medium sized yabby when I am bait fishing though in saying that <clears throat> your flathead will generally pick up these big ones pretty well. This bank is just a whole bank of these big ridges. Sometimes you'll get them where there's just one big ridge and it's then pretty barren. I don't generally try and fish those. Always try and always try and have a fish where where I dig the abbey, especially with these um, 
these yabbies being in row, this feels like a better fish. And that's a goodie. Ah. Nice whiting again. Be surprised if I don't pick up a few more flathead. It's um it's something not a lot of people I don't think actually do go and chase the uh, the flathead with the yabbies and just drift along, but it's a pretty deadly technique. Bit of a problem when I sort of alluded to it before using these real big yabbies that if you're going to chase a flathead the flathead do like the, the bigger yabbies but it does make it hard sometimes for the whiting to get it in one go and you'll often find you'll you'll do better getting them on half a yabby like that um, generally i don't like half a yabby but when they're really big like this so it, it sometimes you know gives you the option to um Gives you the option of uh, you know jagging a big flathead or or also getting a whiting. That's a, that's a better whiting. I've spooked a couple of flathead off here. There's not heaps of dirty water. I just, um, just had to cut a hook off a, a whiting swallowed it. Just another tip, if you are chasing a flathead uh, with your whiting gear or with your, your light mono, I like to make the trace a bit longer than what I do for, um, for whiting. Before whiting, about 300 is about as long as I like a, the trace for that. Keep the yabby down pretty low. With uh, with the avies, I like to uh, with the flathead, I like to um, make it probably 500 long, just to let it waft around a bit, a bit more movement in the um, as it's rolling over the ridges. The flathead seem to pick it up a bit better like that. So, just another bit of a tip, I guess. I'll try and cobble together a few tips just so it makes it easier that they're all in one place. Then, just for what I'm um, what I'm doing when I'm fishing these melon holes. Something I will say, and it's really evident at the moment, I've been pushing around here a bit and struggling to find a bite. If you're not getting a bite in these melon holes, you're probably out too deep. You can see probably in the background, there's a couple of, um, I think they're oyster crackers, something like that, standing on the shallows. And I've just been out that bit, bit too deep and haven't been getting many fish, but as soon as I've moved in, to fish around these mangroves like it's literally a foot deep in here where I'm casting so if you're not finding you're not doing much good push in even shallower that's where your fish will generally be on that on that rising tide Another good one. sort of see as the tides got up the effect of those melon holes and ridges is easing off a bit and so the fish will move in in shallower like it's literally a fisher cast here at the moment I just got to sift out the you know, sift out the brim um, fisher cast but as soon as you see the ridges starting to um, to disappear just because the water's getting too deep like I said Push into the shallows here and you'll do a lot better generally.
a guy, man. In the scene, right? Oh, a guy, man. Bloody. It's pretty good going. I've only got, I think, six pound platypus mono here and a little LRF rod. Yeah, it is a flatty too. Take things nice and steady. Got a pretty fair flathead here just on the white and gear fishing the Yabby and little number four mustard hook and six pound platypus mono. I think it's a flatty anyway, it's not a shoveler. Launching into the creek, or um, or launching me into the creek, one or the other. Not a big fish, but I think I've only got ten pound, ten pound leader on here. So take me time, and hopefully it hasn't swallowed the hook too far down. Right, well that went from being fun to stupid fairly quickly. Stop it!
was that? I lost my hat, but it was floating like a beacon. Magnificent. <laughs>